Well, breaking just moments ago, Boeing and Spirit Aerosystems both just confirming an earlier report that they are, in fact, in merger talks. Joining us here on set, Tony Bancroft, Gabelli's Aerospace and Defense ETF Portfolio Manager. Tony, it's great to have you back. Are you surprised by this? Great to be back. Thanks, Morgan. Uh, I, you know, I think strategically it makes a lot of sense. Um, we've talked about it, you know, in our shop quite a bit. And uh, I think in the near term, you know, there's no silver bullet. Uh, in the near term, there's probably going to be some bumps uh, integrating the, uh, the, the two companies. You know, Spirit's a, it's a large manufacturer. Uh, and, but over, I think in the long term, you're going to see some opportunities for, um, you know, some, some con consolidation with synergies and some opportunities with uh, manufacturing and, you know, operational efficiency. It just, I think it just makes sense in the long term. I, you know, who knows what happened in 2004, the hand, the invisible hand of Adam Smith uh, did, did its due. But uh, I think it's probably the right thing long term. Yeah. And of course, your, your ETF, GCAD, uh, it's the number, Boeing's number two holding, Spirit Aerosystems is number three holding. Both of these I would call turnaround stories right now. Um, Pat Shanahan is running things. He's the, he's the new CEO over at Spirit Aero Systems. Before he was at DOD as the acting defense secretary, he was, quote, unquote, Mr. Fix, Mr. Fix It at Boeing. So I wonder what those types of synergies could look like if this merger actually were to be fulfilled, uh, and also what it means for the broader Boeing portfolio. I mean, they're going to have to spin off defense or no? That, that can just live on its own. Yeah, I, I don't think that's the case. I think, you know, pre-pandemic, 80% uh, of, of Spirit's sales were to Boeing. So... There's a lot of vertical integration that is going on here, and I think they both realize that. And, you know, and people are talking about like, issues with Airbus. You know, Airbus, I think, will easily be able to, uh, you know, if they were, were to buy back the, the two plants that, they're, that they um, produce, uh, you know, um, parts and, and, and fuselages for them, uh, I think that won't be an issue. And I don't think there really should be a lot of regulatory issue. This is not, a, this is not an antitrust, you know, they used to own, they used to own Spirit. They, they pretty much make everything for Boeing, and it's just sort of a logical uh, conclusion, I think. Tony, what's the lesson here from the investor perspective about spinoffs and the effectiveness of those? Because there are a number of defense contractors having various kinds of problems that I think a lot of investors are going to say, oh, well, clearly you should spin that off. Yeah, I, you know, I, I think I go back to the example. Of, imagine if GM were to, you know, have a, an entirely – and to separate entity make all their chassis for, for, every, for every car that they make. And for all intents and purposes, that's sort of what's going on with Boeing and Spirit. I mean, I think there's a lot of IP, there's a lot of uh, integration. You know, you've heard about the travel to work uh, issue with, with what's going on with Boeing and, you know, having to rework. And, you know, it could have essentially the, probably the genesis of the, the most recent incident was the fact that there was probably some miscommunication um, you know, some rework that had to go on, obviously, as, as we know from the initial NTSB report. And I think if you could integrate those two companies in the long run, you're going to have a better culture, you're going to have a better operational efficiency. There's, there's, a lot of, there's a lot of goodness coming out of this, I think, over, over time.